Yo, what up everybody? In today's video, we're going to try to break down the game from last night. The Giants, they fall to 1-2 and two on the season after they lose to the San Francisco 49ers 30-12. to 12. I'll tell you why in a second the Giants lost this football game. But to be short right here, the Niners are a better football team right now. I think everybody should just be able to admit that at this point. But the Giants had their chances to make this a real game down the stretch. And to be honest with you, that is what is most frustrating about this game. We'll dive into that in a second. Let's start with some housekeeping news and notes, though. Some injury stuff. Deontay Banks did leave the game with an arm injury. He is expected to undergo an MRI coming up today on a Friday afternoon. So once we find out more information on Deontay Banks, we will give it to you. But I am almost at the, I am at this point a little bit concerned about his durability. Left week one against the Dallas Cowboys at halftime with a leg injury. Played week two, left week three with an arm injury. So your first round pick has only been able to finish one of three games so far th through the season. Let's hope that that ends here and doesn't continue to go as he's looked good. Did give up a touchdown yesterday, but I like what I have seen from him through the early part of the season. DJ Davidson, a 2022 NFL draft pick, picked in the later rounds. Actually had a really good game in my opinion. Made some plays in the backfield. Got a really good pressure one time, which resulted in a Kayvon Thibodeau sack. Thought he played well, but he got hurt on a dirty play from the offensive uh, lineman, Jake Brendel, for the San Francisco 49ers. The play is over on my Twitter. You can check it out at Marshall Green underscore. Brendel just grabs DJ Davidson's arm when it's out like this and then suplexes him to the ground. And if I had to guess, it's going to be an elbow injury. And I think it might be long-term for Davidson. Sucks for the Giants because he really looked good in his first extended action this season. Evan Neal, probably the biggest news of the day. We did not know this yesterday. We saw he didn't finish the game yesterday. They ended up bringing Matt Parrott to play right tackle. But he rolled his ankle extremely bad on that last interception. Or the only interception by Daniel Jones. Hopefully he's able to go next week. Has an extended off week as the Giants don't play till Monday night against the Seattle Seahawks. Hopefully he can get back because, let's be honest, his offensive line was not good. We'll tell you about that in a second. And without Evan Neal, it is only going to get worse. If more information, more injury news, notes, rumors, or anything come out about Evan Neal, Deontay Banks, or DJ Davidson, <coughs> excuse me, we're going to put out a video as soon as possible. So make sure you are subscribed. Hit that big red sub button. Lock us in. Let's go. All right. Five reasons why I think the Giants lost this football game. Well, I'll give you six. One, they weren't. They just weren't the better team. Let's be honest. But besides that, let's dive into what happened on the football field. The most glaring thing to me was 16 missed tackles. That is embarrassing. The Giants were the best tackling team in the National Football League in 2022. So far through third games, they are the 28th best tackling team through three weeks. 16 missed tackles is a joke, and that is a direct reflection on coaching. And the missed tackles, they ended up hurting and killing the Giants last night. The two third and long screen passes that the 49ers were able to execute, I believe one was on a third and 15, one was on a third and 13, missed tackle after missed tackle. You have to be able to bring a ball carrier down. The Giants were able to do that, and the 49ers racked up 178 yards after the catch. That is more passing yards than Daniel Jones had yesterday. Think about it like that. It's about the little things, especially when you're playing a team that's better than you. Also, the Giants were not able to get off the field on third downs. The 49ers at one point were 8 of 10 on third downs. They finished the game 9 of 16. So the Giants, they finished the game strong on third downs. But in that first half, there were so many chance after chance after opportunity for the Giants to get off the field and get the ball back in Daniel Jones' hands. But you were 8 of 10 at one point. Got to be better on third down, my man. This comes from Doug Analytics. This is wild. The Giants' longest drive lasted 5 minutes and 26 seconds. No other Giants' drive was longer than 3 minutes. The 49ers had 6 drives longer than 4 minutes. Not being able to tackle, not being able to get off the field on 3rd down. That's what it boils down to right there. Point 2. This offensive line is cheeks. It, it, it is one of the worst collection of 5 offensive linemen in the National Football League right now. Listen to this. Daniel Jones was pressured on half of his dropbacks and had an average time of 2.2 seconds until pressured. 
You might say, well, Marshall, it can't be worse than the Dallas Cowboy game. It was. That was worse than week one against the Dallas Cowboys. It was awful. In pro football focus, they graded the Giants' offensive line very harshly. Joshua Zudu got a 27.2 grade. It's 1 to 100, if you didn't know. Shane Lemieux, 31.6. John Michael Schmitz, 33.8. Marcus McKeithen, 28.3. Evan Neal, 45, the highest of the group. And usually, if Evan Neal is your best offensive lineman, that means you didn't have a good day in the trenches, and the Giants did not. Jones was under pressure a lot, no doubt about it. Thought he still left some plays out on the table. We'll talk about that later on. Uh, in the week. Don't have time for that right now. I can't watch Daniel Jones' film. Give me your one-word reaction to the loss last night against the San Francisco 49ers. I'd say bullied, beat up, undisciplined, shoot yourself in the foot with a couple of hyphens in there to make it a one-word reaction. Give me yours, though, down in the comments section. We'll get to more reasons the Giants lost this game coming up in a second. But the reason I'm winning today after a long watch party last night and the drinks were flowing is because of Waterboy. Go to waterboy.com slash chatsports and use the promo code chatsports and you're going to get $15 off your first order. Waterboy is a hydration powder scientifically formulated to cut your hangover time in half. There are other hydration packs on the market, but nothing comes anywhere close to fighting those Sunday scaries like Waterboy. With zero sugar and over three times the electrolytes of liquid IV, your hangover will stand no chance. Unlike their competitors, Waterboy has added ingredients beyond just hydration to help with the nausea, anxiety, and fatigue. We all know that hydration alone isn't enough to help after that bender you had in Vegas or the watch party we had last night. For a limited time, our listeners will get 15% off your entire order with the promo code CHATSPORTS at waterboy.com. Slash chat sports. Hundreds of thousands of people already trust Waterboy as their hangover cure. It's time to stop dealing with that anxiety alone. For a limited time, my listeners here on Giants Now will get an exclusive 15% off discount when they use the code chat sports at waterboy.com slash chat sports. That's 15% off with code chat sports at waterboy.com slash chat sports. Waterboy has got you covered. That link will be clickable down in the comments and description. It helps me. It's helping me out a lot right now. You may have had a rough night, or you will in the future. Get hooked up with Waterboy. Waterboy.com slash chat sports, promo code chat sports. All righty, another big problem last night for the Giants was not their lack of trying to generate pressure on Brock Purdy. It was the fact that they brought an insane amount of pressure, and they didn't get home. It didn't affect Brock Purdy. Purdy was blitzed on 84.6% of the time, and he ended up being 19 of 31 for 252 yards and two touchdowns when he was blitzed. When you blitz, you don't get home. It leaves your young secondary susceptible to being beat. And that's what they were time and time again. And also, you didn't tackle, so the yards for catch was incredible. The Niners offense dominated the Giants defense yesterday. They had the football for 39 minutes. There's 60 minutes in a ball game. They had the they had the ball gave the ball for the entire game. 441 yards, 300 through the air, another 141 on the ground. They couldn't stop Christian McCaffrey, the only time it seems like the Giants got to stop was when Elijah Mitchell was in the game. And once again, you didn't create a turnover. We told you, if you don't create chaos, you don't get after the quarterback, and you don't create turnovers, you're going to get blown out. And the Giants, they did just that, losing 30-12. to We got to be honest with ourselves at this point. I'm talking to you, Brian Dable. I'm talking to you, Mike Kafka. I hope you take this personally, because I know you guys do watch. This is a bad offense. This is a bad offense. Be honest. You had 150 yards, 150 yards. You averaged 3.3 yards per play. That's not even a first down. It's not even a first down if you run three plays. You threw for 120, 22 completions for 121 yards is mind-blowing. That is mind-blowing to me. 11 carries for 29 yards. I don't like that they got away from the run game. One of the best plays of the night was the 12-yard touchdown play on the wham blocking where Matt Breida ran it in and ran through three off three 49ers. Just because you had Saquon doesn't mean you can't run the football. There should have been a stronger focus on running the football. You had the ball for less than 21 minutes yesterday. 22 completions for 137 yards. Jones was not good, was not bad, didn't have time to throw. I understand that. But he did leave some plays on the table yet again. Third and 11 to Darren Waller. Waller, six foot six, jumps in the air, his arms up. That's almost seven and a half feet tall. Threw it too high. When you're playing a team that's better than you, 
you got to be on your P's and Q's. Daniel Jones in this offensive line was not. Think about it like this. Points scored in recent games for the Giants. 31 points in the playoff game against the Vikings. Then you put up seven in the playoff game against the Eagles. Then zero against the Cowboys. 31 versus the Cardinals and 12 versus the Niners. I understand the three best teams in the NFC are the 49ers, Cowboys, and Eagles. But you scored 19 points in those three games. You're averaging about 6.3 points per game against a good defense. It's easy to beat the Vikings. They fired their defensive coordinator. He hasn't got a job since. It's easy to put up 31 points against a Buda Bakerless Cardinals defense. But until you can score points against a good defense, this offense is unserious. Especially considering Jalen Hyatt played 16 snaps. I know you might say, Marshall, you can't throw the ball deep. You got no time to throw. Jalen Hyatt shouldn't play. It. Do you understand that if Jalen Hyatt is on the outside on the football field, the safety has to shade that way. You have to take a safety out of the box. Less people in the box means more, less blitzes, which means less pressure. You don't have to throw him the ball, but he has such a gravitational pull on the defense, all eyes and attention go to him. Because when it doesn't, 13 is running behind you, like he did in week two, and like he did it a couple of times yesterday, and Jones couldn't get him the ball. It was unfortunate. He has to play more. I am done watching Paris Campbell play football. He is not good. He is not a good receiver. He should not be taking snaps over Wandale Robinson or Jalen Hyatt. To win in the NFL, you have to create chunk plays. We told you about that all offseason long. The teams with the top 10 most chunk plays were the top 10 teams pretty much in the NFL record-wise. You have a chunk play creator in Jalen Hyatt. And Darren Waller, but you consistently send Waller over over routes, on drags, on stops, on slants. How about you push the ball down to the field vertically with him? Last year, Waller had three receptions for 72 yards and a touchdown versus that same 49ers defense. We just keep calling him on over route, over route, over route. Until you push the ball downfield, this offense is not going to generate much points. 16 missed tackles. Offensive line is cheeks. Blitzing but not getting home. This is a bad offense. Too many missed opportunities. What are the missed opportunities? The first drive of the game, you dropped two picks. Adore Jackson dropped a pick. Deontay Banks dropped a pick. If you want to beat a team that's better than you, you got to capitalize when they put the ball in your hands. Giants did not do that. What about when the game was 3-3? Three to three? Giants forced the 49ers to punt the football. Big Blue gets the ball back at their own 10-yard line. And we run a play action boot. Rolling right into a one-on-one -on -one pass block set for Daniel Bellinger and Nick Bosa? What genius thought that was going to work? Jesus Christ. What about Jones and Waller not being able, being able to connect on third and 11 when it was a one-possession game late in the ball game in the fourth quarter? One, it was either the fourth quarter or late in the third quarter. It was an eight-point game. It was 20-12, to 12, I believe, at that point. And it was the third and eleven. Waller's wide open, and Jones makes him touch the freaking sky, and he can't bring it down. Put it on his chest. Jones has not been able to lead receivers on crossing routes over the middle of the field. I don't know what the problem is right there. And then the Leonard Williams roughing the passer penalty. Was it a bullshit penalty? Yes. Should it have been a flag? Absolutely not. You know why? Because I know there was no one in the world that watched that play when it immediately happened and said, oh, that should have been a flag. You're only saying it was a flag because it was. No one in real time said it should have been a flag. But the rules are the rules. And the Giants shot themselves in the foot time and time again. The Kayvon Thibodeau play. Too many mental mistakes. You can't beat yourself versus a better team. The Giants did too much of that yesterday. What's frustrating is, should you have won this game? No. But you didn't. You didn't. You, didn't, you got beat by 18 points. It was never that bad. You should have been in the game to the end but it was the self-inflicted wounds that continue to haunt this team right now. I mean, the Giants had 10 players on offense one play. you got to be better than that. Can they turn it around? Can the Giants turn it around? They play Monday night against the Seattle Seahawks back in East Rutherford. That's a must-win ball game at this point. Because then you got the Dolphins, you got the Bills, you got the Jets. Schedule doesn't get much easier. Can they turn it around? Type Y for yes, type N for no. Remember, you can also give me a follow over on Twitter at Marshall Green underscore. I'm tweeting about the Giants all day, every day. <sighs> Very frustrating loss. We'll see you later.